Hey friends, it's Kip Icon and welcome back to Kip Plays Kentucky Route Zero. This is scene six, I believe. Its subtitle is A Grove. Ooh, look how pretty this is. Wow, and the way that the lights slowly change is very theatrical. Very much like stage lights in a, in a stage show. Well, this has the potential of being a really beautiful scene between Kate and Ezra, so here we go. Kate gently, gently rolls a fallen branch and plucks something white from the underside. She holds it up for Ezra to examine. Pleurocybella porogens. The common name is angel wings. Isn't that, a, isn't that pleasant? They have a delicate, springy texture, and they're tasty like sweet moss. Would you like a bite? Sweet moss doesn't sound very tasty to me. Personally, I like to be able to tell where my food came from by flavor alone. I like to taste my surroundings, I mean. It keeps me connected to the, the whole thing. She lit a cigarette with the embers of the first one. She trembled, sweating a little under a heavy coat. It was warmer near the doors, but she was following directions. No smoking within 25 feet of hospital entrance. Wait, 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 is this something that Kate is remembering? Let me reread that with this new uh, with this in mind. Okay, she lit a second cigarette with the embers of the first one. She trembled, sweating a little under a heavy coat. It was warmer near the doors, but she was following directions. No smoking within 25 feet of hospital entrance. So she's remembering something here. So she stood by a hot dog cart parked at the edge of the sidewalk. My mushroom hunting mentor told me, it's useless to pretend to know mushrooms. They escape your erudition. The more you know them, the less sure you feel about identifying them. She taps the cover of the small red book she's carrying. That's why I always bring my favorite guidebook. Kate points to a small mushroom growing in the dirt. Oh, here's an important one to recognize, though. Look, see the sort of greenish pallor of the cap? Amanita phalloides. That's Greek. Amanita means mushroom, and phalloides means... Um... Never mind. <laughs> it smells like honey. Yeah, sort of nauseating though, right? Sickly sweet. Death cap. That's the common name. It's killed a lot of people, this little mushroom, including a few Roman emperors. It's a revolutionary. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, even the Buddha died from eating a mushroom when he was very old. That's just what they do. Clear away old things, make room for new things. It's a very poetic way of looking at it. Pretty important, right? I've always thought they deserved a little more respect. Would you like to help me look for a few more? I have a sort of shopping list. Great, look for... Actually, just grab any mushrooms that catch your eye and throw them in this bag. Let me know when you're done and we'll see what you've got. Have fun. That's the second rule of mushroom hunting. The first rule is ask Kate before eating anything, okay? Ooh, this could be dangerous. Kate kneels in the grass. Oh, uh, or Kate digs in a, pear, in a bare patch of dirt, or Kate examines some tree roots. Let's have her dig in a bare patch of dirt, just because the idea of the smell of dirt under your fingernails is very evocative to me. It's a bit muddy from flooding or the general dampness of the caves. She finds two promising specimens, a spotted brown cap and a dense bundle of dark ridges. The hot dog vendor tried to strike up a conversation with some immediately too personal questions. She decided to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he considered it a part of his job, she thought, to offer his customers some kind of counsel. Maybe it was to salve his guilty conscience for selling junk food outside a hospital. Kate inspects the dense bundle of dark ridges. Dark brown ridges and folds cover the surface of the mushroom. It has a pleasant, almost fruity smell. Kate plucks the mushroom from the dirt and puts it in her bag. Mm. Ezra checks out a plastic bag washed up on the island. The bag is ragged and waterlogged. He nudges it with a stick, coiling up a plastic thread and spreading it out on the beach. He didn't like to play in the house. It was always too cold. It seemed to store up the cold at night, then slowly discharge it into his bones during the day while the sun bounced feebly off the windows but he liked to play in the woods behind the house. He'd taken a knife from the kitchen, selected for its long, serrated edge, meant for slicing bread. 
Its teeth had reminded him of a saw blade. He was determined to collect some firewood to heat the house. There are no mushrooms in the bag. Oh, I need to be picking the mushrooms instead of poking plastic bags. I carumba. Um, Kate kneels in the grass. She parts the grass with her garden knife, studiously combing the ground. Had she ever tried any alternative medicines, acupuncture, homeopathy, uh, Ayurveda, magical thinking? She said she'd never heard of any of those things. He fished a stray hot dog out of the pickle jar. There are no mushrooms in the grass. Didn't find anything? That's okay. I just found this one. Kate takes the dense bundle of dark ridges out of her bag. This one I can't really use, but I picked it just to show it to you. It looks a lot like the very popular eating mushroom around these parts called a moral, but it's not a moral. Kate slices the mushroom in half lengthwise. It's full of white fiber, the consistency of cotton. This is the easiest way to tell them apart. The real moral is empty. This one, the false moral, is actually kind of poisonous. I forget what its effects are exactly. Here, let's check the Vermulen book. Vermulen book. Kate flips through the pages of her guidebook. Okay, here it is. Symptoms include wanting to fight, demanding answers, dryness of eyes, nose and lips, restless sleep, dreams of flood, of rolling stones, accidents, people transforming into owls, vampires, rockets, and traveling to stars. Huh, that, that doesn't sound so bad actually. Kate puts the mushroom back in her bag. He tripped on a protruding root and lay for a while in the mud, examining the pale upper branches of a sycamore tree, listening to the soft rumble of a faraway thunderstorm, then louder, closer, and his hair stood on end, and there was the bird. So, is that when he found Julian, I wonder? What do your parents do? For work, I mean. My dad used to sell windows. People were building a lot of new houses and they needed a lot of windows, but then they stopped building houses. My mom worked at a bakery and a bar. Sometimes she would see the same people in the morning and the evening. The bakery closed and she doesn't want to work at the bar anymore, but she still goes there a lot to see her friends. <laughs> what a cutie. Do you have a family? Oh, oh. Ooh, these are both good because I almost had a baby once as deep. And then I left home when I was very young, not much older than you actually, would be a great way to um, get closer to Ezra, but maybe maybe Ezra might open up a little bit more to her. Let's do that one, even though I really want to know about this. I left home when I was very young, not much older than you actually. Hmm, I bounced around jobs and shelters and finally found my way to the Echo River, never looked back. Years later, my mother got sick and I tried to visit her, but it was too late. She was all spaced out on fevers and morphine. Um, that's a little, uh, neither hither nor tither, I think, for Ezra, so... I bounced around jobs and shelters and finally found my way down to the Echo River. Never looked back. i basically been on my own since then. Well, that's not really true. Just about everyone who sets foot aboard the Mucky Mammoth feels like family to me now. I guess if nobody's family, then everybody's family. <laughs> Months later, she came across a book on homeopathic medicine in a used bookstore and bought it. She thought it was mostly bullshit, but found the author's notes on the unpredictability of mushrooms immediately compelling, spiritual even. She started collecting mushrooms on hikes, never eating them, just collecting, identifying, and discarding. Eventually, she continued with the Lexington Mycological Society and began to study in earnest the medicinal uses of fungi. Um. Both of these are good. Again, I'm going to have to go with, these are the only trees in the whole cave. Who planted them here? Right, not many trees down here in the dark. Oh, good point. How do those trees, what? I know these are some kind of cypress, and they were definitely planted here deliberately uh, by someone who, I guess I don't know much about this place, really. It's supposed to be some kind of um, memorial to something. Will would know more. Sorry, it's a mystery. It's a mystery! <laughs> I'll search for clues. Dang, Ezra is great. Love that kid. 
Ezra investigates a cypress tree. Ezra looks around the shore. Ezra examines a large stone monument. Yeah, let's do that. That probably is going to give us the answer. The monument is covered in lichen and uh, is covered with lichen and painted text. Ezra reads the text. Rock graffiti. X plus O forever. Ezra investigates a cypress tree. Or oh, uh yeah, let's do that. The tree smells spicy, oily. Ezra looks up into the branches. Some of the branches have been trimmed recently. She put out her cigarette, said goodbye to the hot dog vendor, and spent the rest of the afternoon listening to doctors and trying to understand the world as they did, as a list of discreet injuries to be mended. All right, what have you got? That stone face monument has X plus O forever painted on it. Interesting. What do you think that means? Hug and kiss forever? No, probably not. Or they could be initials, Xavier and Olivia forever, Xerxes and Oliver. What do you think that monument's for? Oh, look, it's the cat! Oh, wait, no, it's several cats. Okay, this is not the Mucky Mammoth. I thought this was the Mucky Mammoth here, but, you know, that wouldn't make sense. Wow, look at how many cats are on this boat. That's, it's a boat full of cats. What do you think that monument's for? I'm not sure anyone remembers. <laughs> well, it's not being a very good monument, is it? The branches on the tree are trimmed. Oh, good observation. So I guess somebody's still taking care of this place or just practicing their tree trimming somewhere out of the way? Well, Ezra, I can't say I know what all that adds up to. Like I said, I wish Will were here. He'd have some local history for us. We can ask him back on the boat. Look at this crazy boat full of cats. What the heck? Kate and Ezra look up at an old battleship drifting by. Oh, it's an old battleship. Oh, there it is. The Iron Pariah! That was on my list of things to look out for, and it was mentioned in here and there along the Echo, but I don't really remember what they said about it there. Don't worry, it's just passing by. What do you think of it? Have you ever been aboard? Oh no, I've never even been close. I have to admit I'm a little curious, but... Well, sometimes places get an aura of the forbidden about them and it just seems best to stay away. Plus, it would ruin the mystery. Hmm. Supposedly, there, supposedly there's nobody even aboard. No people, I mean. I mean, there must be something on there. Life is everywhere. Rats, insects, some kind of hardy mold. How about all of the cats? Are you unable to see the cats from where you are? Oh, well, I suppose there's no lights behind the ship, so... Part of it could be flooded and host to some of the eyeless fish that live in the Echo. Hey, maybe there are some mushrooms growing in there slowly consuming military rations from over a hundred years ago? Someone told me she got close to it by accident and heard a strange wailing sound. She was a passenger on the Mammoth. She said she'd been out fishing on a rowboat and got swept up by a current near the cluttered place. Before she knew it, the Iron Pariah was upon her, unimaginably massive up close but eerily silent. The only sounds, she said, were the lapping of the lake water against its iron hull and a faint sort of, well, she said a chorus of mews. Well, yeah, of course there are a bunch of cats on there. I'll be damned if I know what that sounds like. <laughs> I've never gotten close enough to the ship myself. Ezra's parents shook him awake. They seemed alarmed, but not immediately concerned. They led him back to the house, past the house, into the car. More mysteries. They do pile up over time as people forget the details. Dad said they were going to stay at the bus station for a while, the one with the little arcade with the car game he liked. Thanks for taking me mushroom picking. Dad watched him closely in the rearview mirror, expecting Ezra to be excited or confused or scared, but he didn't feel anything. He hardly seemed to hear. Mushroom hunting. You can pick apples because they're right out there in the op open. Mushrooms hide. You gotta hunt for them. In fact, he felt like he was observing the family car from a distance, 
from far above, from the clouds. I think it's time to go. That was really pretty. That was a really pretty scene. So I guess those are not stalagmites as I thought. See that rough circle of, oh, right, this is Will. See that rough circle of rocky protrusions near the shore? It's more intricate than it looks. More than two thirds of it is actually underwater. I haven't seen it myself, but listen to this. It's man-made and the rocks weren't placed according to their size, so what's visible is more or less a uniformly random selection of the overall shape. It looks like it might be a spiral, all told, or maybe some kind of meditative labyrinth. At the head of it is a petrified oak stump. That was moved here from above ground, of course, decades ago. That's where the ceremony took place. The Lock Lux were married here. Many frail-tongued observers said they should just go with lock or luck or split the difference with look or even lick or really anything else, but it was never going to happen. Marge Luck and Errol Lock met in prison. Greta Luck and Norm Lock were high school sweethearts. Billy Luck and W.H. Lock met in the line at the, at the DMV. That uh, seems pretty slice of life. Billy, uh, Billy Luck and W.H. Lock met in line at the, D at the DMV. Their driver's license photographs were mixed up by the clerk, a mistake they discovered immediately but never corrected. Their engagement was welcome news for the family businesses who had been looking for some opportunity to merge interests. Mm. We have printing press and bicycle couriers. We have Lock Large Animal Storage and the Lux of the Luck Family Nut Company. These were the locks of Lock Large Animal Storage and the Lux of the Luck Family Nut Company. Surely someone in, the, in some branch of these two great trees had elephant husbandry on the brain. This is all speculation. <laughs> That's right. The ceremony itself was humble and perfunctory, and it must have somehow involved these rocks. Maybe they walked around them in a spiral, like a symbol of their ever-tightening bond. Probably the rocks marked the boundaries between the two families. Lux on the inner loop and locks on the outer, or the other way around. Let's go with... Maybe they walked around them in a spiral like a symbol of their ever-tightening bond. And it must have also involved that petrified stump. Neither family is particularly religious, but rumors persist that the efficient wore a robe. <laughs> what is all this over here? Okay, so our options are, Shannon helped me fix up a mushroom stew in the kitchen, which we are not going to take because Shannon and her friend set out in the dinghy to deliver a package to, at the telephone exchange. And I'm interested to know that every time Will refers to Conway, he refers to him as Shannon's friend or the old man, never by name. I mean, this is the protagonist of Kentucky Route Zero, right? Right? Well, in the next episode of Kip Plays Kentucky Route Zero, we are going to set out in the dinghy to deliver a package at the telephone exchange. This seems... A little spoopy because we'll be in a tiny little boat in this big dark cave but we'll see we'll see what happens so thanks a lot for watching i have been and i'll continue to be kip icon as long as you guys continue to follow your drams bye